Hi everyone, good morning. It's Margaret Manning here. Welcome to 60 and Me. Hope you're doing great this morning, wherever you are, and uh, getting off to a great start. I'm drinking my morning cup of tea. I've got my um, green tea, <laughs> uh, jasmine. Uh, it's lovely, lovely tea. I actually have been drinking it um, iced cold with a bit of um, uh, lemon juice, and uh, it's just one of those versatile teas that I, I enjoy. But anyway, hope that you're doing well, and sit down and relax, and uh, have a topic that we've talked about a bit before but it's one that I think is so important for women in our 60s and it's just useful to get a different uh, perspective and lens on the on the subject so um, I want to start first of all though by thanking our sponsor Puritans Pride um, part of our philosophy here at 60 and me is that health and well-being is very critical to a happy life in your 60s and so you can check out the Puritans Pride website and you can just see how um, a balanced nutrition can really contribute to a health the lifestyle. So that's Puritan's pride. Now, um, the topic. Topic today. Uh, one that I dealt with in depth about three, four years ago, maybe longer, and actually have now made a lifestyle um, d decision to, to focus on. That's downsizing. Just reducing the number of items that I have in my life. It seems honestly like every week I take a bag of things to the local charity shop because I just go through my closet and I realize you know, why did I buy that? Or I don't really wear that. Or, you know, someone else can use this more than I. And I just find that it's a constant process. And, um, you know, I, th I think it's important that we look at it from different angles. I mean, one is that it saves us money. Number two, it saves us space. It saves us mental uh, space in terms of feeling like we are dealing with our, our life after 60. But I think start at the beginning and talk about the fact that the reason we can be thinking about downsizing in our 60s is that our lives have changed. You know, the garage full of uh, ski equipment and toys and bikes and things that we had for our kids, just not there anymore. We don't need it. We don't need those extra things. And, um, you know, so we just are in this transition. Um, also, many women are empty nesters. You know, either kids have left home, they're starting their own families, uh, you know, living their own lives. And so they just don't need that kind of um, backup, you know, what if kind of stuff. <laughs> what if we run out of food or what if we whatever? So the empty nest syndrome. Many women are getting divorced, you know, divorced and uh, finding that uh, the, the things that they had as, needed as a couple or as a family just are not needed anymore. So, you know, you've got a big house uh, that maybe is too full for your for the transition that you're making in your 60s. You know, exploring new new interests in life becomes the focus. You know, you can start a new career. We talked about that. I certainly did. Uh, a simpler lifestyle in general. We can be more creative, you know, and make do with things that, um, you know, that, that are, are important and, and precious to us. And also can travel. We can get out there and not have to worry about a, a lot of possessions and, you know, insuring them and worrying about them. We just narrow it down to the things that are absolutely critical and important to us. And then, of course, the bottom line is that we save money. We don't need to be buying so much stuff anymore. And I think that this is like everything else in our early earlier years, we, we form a contextual relationship around people and places and also around our things. And I think we start to define ourselves by those that stuff. And so this 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 challenge of, of downsizing and, and becoming more minimalistic, becoming a minimalist is um, is like tearing a part of yourself away as well. So I think that's why sometimes it can be so hard. But here's some ideas. I mean, what, what do you what, what should you do if you're thinking about um, moving into a new place, uh, selling a bigger house, moving out or just downsizing in general? Look, look realistically at the space. If you're thinking of renting an apartment, for example, hey, is your furniture going to fit? You know, is it going to look OK? Will it be the is it the right size? Have you got enough walls for the art that you want to keep? This was one of my biggest challenges when I moved is um, I we had a couple of houses, actually, and we had lots and lots of walls <laughs> and lots of art. And when I moved into a very small space uh, by myself, I I had to store all my art except for a few pieces. And then um, gradually I gave it away. I gave it to a charity that um, was doing a homeless art gallery uh, initiative. And, you know, I just felt it was better there than in my my um, storage unit. And so um, that's one thing. Is your space going to work? 
Um, try living small before you move. You know, maybe go rent an Airbnb for a month somewhere. Just just check out a small space and see how you move in it, <laughs> whether it really works for you. Another thing is to declutter smartly. You know, it's, it's like if you're going to do it, do it in a way that has no, well, has some emotion always, but has clear of the emotion of um, I don't ever need this again. Throw it out and then think a few months or years later, I really wish I'd kept that. You know, just be smart about the things you let go. And some people find that having, um, you know, um, a storage unit is, is a good idea for the transition where you can just put things in that kind of holding zone. <laughs> Maybe go travel a bit or do whatever you want to do, but know that the things are still there. And if you decide when you come back or you just think about things that you want to keep them, then they're not they've not been thrown away. I think that's that's important. And as I said, you know, mentioned the word emotions, just in my opinion, be really, really prepared for emotion. Because it goes back to what I said about connection to these things that we actually do feel part of ourselves is somehow tied up in those items in those articles. So you know, get a professional organizer to help you if you if you need someone to be a voice of sanity, <laughs> and let them and let them help you I do one room at a time one closet at a time and uh, just help you make decisions. I think sometimes that can be super helpful. And there are people now that do it. Maybe you want to start a company uh, helping other people downsize. It's a good idea. And then I guess the thing, the point I was making earlier that um, comes from decluttering is, are you prepared to make it a lifestyle? This is, this is so important because you would not believe how quickly you can, you can start gathering stuff again. I remember when I first did my downsizing exercise, I had 22, I think, berets, all different colors. You know, I love hats. I love berets. And I narrowed it down to three. I thought it was so good, you know, pink, purple, and black. And I thought that was great. Well, within a year, I had another 10 berets. They're not expensive. I got them at the charity shops. <laughs> and I was back up to 10 berets. Now, I think I probably do have about 10, and that's kind of where I'm at. I don't buy any other hats. That's my wardrobe of hats. So, but the point here is that um, be careful that you that you make it something that you 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 incorporate. There's lots of really cool blogs now on lifestyles, and um, I read one yesterday, in fact, and she said one thing in her blog that really really struck me, and I'm going to do it, and that was make your kitchen counter sacred. I really never thought about it in that kind of a way. But she says, keep it clean, keep it spacious, keep it only with the things. Like I have a little table that I put things that I'm going to do that day. Like if I have some mail to drop off or I have um, a package to, to send or some something to do at the bank, I'll um, put that on the little table on a corner and then I remove it. I know that's done. You know, it's, it's, it's finished. But that's important, I think, to have um, a way of um, bringing minimalism, simplicity into your everyday life can do that I means sell things if you can there's some really good ways now you can find new homes for for things but just find some ways to give away recycle reuse repurpose do something so that the the items are not wasted we're not adding to landfills and at the same time we are clearing our hearts and minds of these things there's a really great quote i think it's by um uh, John, I can't think of his name, Morris, who was the founder of the arts and crafts movement. And he said, have nothing in your home that you don't consider to be useful or beautiful. So maybe that's a place to start. Well, I really appreciate you uh, listening to this and hopefully getting something out of it. Leave your comments in the section below. If you've gone through a downsizing exercise, how did you do it? What, what was it all about? Have you downsized your home recently? And you know, what was the experience like? What could you share with other women in our community? Okay, everybody. Well, I hope that you're having a great day. It's nice and sunny and bright here today. So I'm going to go out for a walk and uh, hope that you do something good for yourself and tell us about your downsizing experience. And I look forward to chatting with you all again soon. Bye-bye for now.